Hey guys, Easy Science here. Michael here. Today's video is going to be a new one, so stay in tune. Today's video is about nomenclature, which means, in easier terms, naming of things and choosing names for things in particular fields of sciences, such as chemistry, physics, anything. You can find that. In particular, we will learn about the nomenclature for the compounds, covalent compounds, ionic compounds, ionic with polyatomic, there are different things. And when you make compounds, you can't just put them together. There is a universal scientific method to make the compound names. The International Union of Pure and Applied Chemists developed this naming system and there are two main things why they developed it or purposes. First, to provide a nomenclature naming system that would be recognized by everyone and chemists around the world can efficiently communicate with each other. Secondly, to give a systematic approach to naming things and they can be easily renamed and named with the existing nomenclature. Since there's already a system implied, you don't have to make up new things, which would take time just to name a compound. So this is a plus of nomenclature. So let's start off with binary compounds, such as covalent compounds. The binary compounds are ones that are made up of two elements, where the name bi, which means two, comes from in this part. So this would be an example. So let's say we have N stands for nitrogen and oxygen with a 2. How would we name this? You can't just say nitrogen, oxygen. No, that doesn't sound right, nor does it make sense. First off, to start naming a compound, the most electronegative compound is written last. Hence, the le least electronegative is written first. Electronegativity, you may be asking, is the amount of the amount of force or the amount an element in a in a bond will pull the other electrons toward itself. Which means, how strong of an electro pull, electrostatic pull, does it have towards electrons? So, in this case, nitrogen is the weaker one; oxygen is the stronger one. Hence, they're written this way. This only applies in covalent compounds. To name this, we will use the Latin system of naming by checking the number of atoms there are. How many are there in the nitrogen spot? Just one. In the oxygen spot, there are two. But we don't write the one in there because one doesn't change anything. We always assume there's a one. With the Latin prefixes, they go as mono for one, di for two, tri for three, tetra for four, penta for five, and so on. You may know this already as there is triple, double, you see what I'm talking about. This corresponds to the number of atoms there are. So if the first one is nitrogen, we would write mono nitrogen, but for the first atom, we don't write mono. We only write mono for the second one. So this would be this atom or compound would be nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen because there's only one nitrogen and the second one dioxide because there are two oxygens as we can see. Di corresponds to two. Easy, right? Let me give you another example. Let us do hydrogen peroxide. Oops, shouldn't have told you guys, but let, let me just explain why, why I'm naming it this. Here, let me do a better example, actually. Here, let me do this one. P2 S3. What would this be? This is basically, sorry about the rain, but this is phosphorus and that is sulfur. What would it be in terms 
of the compounds. Well, as we can see here, there's two, there's three there. As we know, for the first one, we place phosphorus first because it's less electronegative, and since it has two, we put the di suffix right now. Oops. Di phosphorus. As we know, we place di for phosphorus, as there are two phosphors, and trisulfide, as there are three sulfur. One note. We put the suffix "-ide", the, at the end, to indicate the more electronegative element in the compound. Because it makes it sound better. I know it sounds weird, but it flows better. And indicates that it is more electronegative. So that is a rule we also have to use. Next one, we have ionic compound slash salts. Basically... They are a non-metal plus metal. Let's say typical one we would use is oh, okay, this is better. Na Cl. What does this represent? Na is sodium and Cl is chlorine. So what is the compound? How do we even name this? As I said before, the same rule applies. We use I for the last element or the non-metal, I for suffix, and there's a space between the two. Same thing, metal written first, non-metal written second. And that is all. It's much simpler than the other naming. So let's say this one would be sodium chloride. Let's see, we have a different example. Al two O three aluminum and oxygen. What would this be? Since we don't name using the land system, we just put aluminum oxide oxide for the non-metal. Simple as that. So for ionic with polytonic, now this is a bit looking more complicated, but it is basically it's the same thing as ionic compound naming, but with a polyatomic ion. Let's see, we have Na2. Geez, I'm sorry about that. SO4. Now, this is the hard part, because is it NaS and is it sodium, sulfur, and oxygen? No, this is where you have to distinguish it. This is actually a polyatomic ion, sulfate. Why is there two in front of the Na? Because this has a charge of two, minus two, this has a charge of plus one, crisscross method, and you get them there. How do we name this? Same way as before. Just we need to recognize that it's a polyatomic sulfate, sodium sulfate. But we don't put the I because it's a polyatomic ion. Okay, now we're gonna get into more complicated stuff. Let's name some acids. The first way to name acids is knowing which acid there is. There are many acids, including binary acids and oxy acids. Let's go with the binary acids. Binary acids are just aqueous solutions of the corresponding gas. <coughs> aqueous aqueous solution basically just means that it's a solution of something. So like when you mix up sugar, in this case it would break down and make a solution with that gas. In this case, let's say we bubbled chlorine chlorine gas cl2 through water the hydrogen in the water would connect with the chlorine as it is it has a negative charge this has a positive charge negative charge connect and in turn this would create the hcl 
this is how the acid is written. You must put the aqueous symbol right here, just AQ. This is a binary acid. How do we name this? There's two ways. The IUPAC method, which is the organization where you just name the atom. Basically, this would just be hydrogen fluoride, right? When I mean uh, the gases, when you put them through, what I actually meant is the gas, which would be hydrogen chloride gas. This gas will be bubbled through the water to create the aqueous solution of hydrogen chloride. The IUPAC method, like I was going to say, you just name it aqueous hydrogen chloride. But the more known way is the classical method, where you put hydro to symbolize that it's a hydrogen. Let me write this down. Hydro and the second atom, chlorine. So hydrochloric with the suffix ic with the non metal acid. This would name it. This would show that it's an acid and it's a binary acid. Next ones will be oxy acids. Oxy acids are usually made up of three or more elements. Two of the three are oxygen hydride. On the binary, which is just hydrogen and the non metal, here there's an extra oxygen. The other element is a non metal. <laughs> hydrogen is always at the front, like we saw with the binary acids. But but most oxy acids are involved with the bond of hydrogen and the polyatomic ion, like we discussed before. It's important to know about it. Let's do an example. Ooh, you might have heard about this one before. I think you have. H2SO4. Why is there two? Because this polyatomic called sulfate has a charge of 2 minus. Okay, how would we name this? Since there's an oxygen, we know it's a oxy acid. And since it's bubbled through, like with the last one, we know it's aqueous as it is a aqueous solution. So, classical U UPOC, IUPOC, it's the same way as before. This is called hydrogen phosphate, but as an acid, it would be aqueous hydrogen, shoot, sorry, sulfate, hydrogen sulfate, and IUPOC would be aqueous hydrogen sulfate. The classical method would just be, instead of putting the hydro, we just put, as we know, sulfur, we would do sulfur, Sulfur and ric sulfuric acid. That sounds much cooler and it gives it the acid name. The last type of things are hydrates. So hydrates are salts, salts, ionic compounds like table salt, but during evaporation they retain some of the water. So let's say we do reaction with hydrochloric acid and this other base through the basic neutralization acid base neutralization we receive a salt this salt hence will be in the water when we evaporate it some of the water may be retained and the crystalline structure of the salt incorporates a specific number of water molecules hydrates are written as this let's say we have Copper sulfate. Since this has a two, and it, there's no two showing, that means copper. We assume as well has a two, and they just canceled out. Copper sulfate, and let's say we use a dot to represent the other, how many hydrates there, are, and that there's a hydrate. Let's say there's a five, five. H2O, meaning in this case, in this compound, 
each one there's five water molecules incorporated. How do we name this? We name it as we would normally copper sulfate, but we use again Latin numerals to name how many others there are with the number. So five will be penta, so it will be penta hydrate, hydrate meaning that there's water inside. That's how we will name it. Pretty straightforward, let's say. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I like this. I learned something new. Hope you guys learned something new about naming chemical compounds. Alright guys, subscribe if you liked the video. Leave a like below. Leave your comments for next videos. And peace out, easy science.